places that they can build that don't need so many rules to be bent. Why should we allow unaffordable housing into this community when they require so much special favor? Thank you. Thank you, next caller, Clara Solis. Clara Solis. Hi. I support the staff report's denial of this project. I urge you to follow the recommendations of the California Department of Fish and Wildlife. The Southern California black walnut is a rare and protected tree that has limited range in Los Angeles. These trees are found in the hillsides of El Sereno. The Chumash use these trees and our current Northeast residents are trying to protect these trees, which provide habitat for 29 species of birds. These trees are hardy and those unfamiliar with them might think they are unhealthy. They are able to survive severe droughts and come back after peer, appearing dormant. Our primarily Latinx communities of El Sereno, Boyle Heights, Highland Park, and Lincoln Heights are becoming heat islands from development, which is removing open space without providing housing that is affordable to our communities. The small lots ordinance was intended to provide affordable ownership and opportunities. Instead, developers are buying up lots in our communities to build small lot units that are unaffordable. In Clara, and would you please wrap up your thoughts? Your time is up. Yes, um, that are unaffordable. This is causing gentrification in our communities. I urge the denial of this. Thank you. Thank you. Next caller, Samantha Russell. You may now speak. My apologies. Give me one moment. Samantha Russell. Can you hear me? Hello? Can you hear me? Hi, Samantha. We can hear you. Hi. Um, so I live up on the top of Amethyst with my partner, and we're both biologists. Um, and I just wanted to say that we can see firsthand that these hills are full of wildlife. There are 43 different bird species that we've identified. You can see the little foot trails from the coyotes that live up here. Um, and we really just can't continue to let developers pick off every last piece of green space for the sake of profits. Um, I also wanted to mention, because I think it's very important, that there's a lot of fire danger up on this hill. I've been here the last uh, for the last two fires that um, took place very close to our house in the last six months. We live right next to one of the houses that burned down. Fire trucks could barely get up the streets. There was a dog trapped in the fire and they couldn't get emergency services up to help this dog for over two hours. There's just no room for emergency services to come up. And it's not a hypothetical. People's lives are at stake. And I think that stacking 32 more multi-car homes onto this hillside, like sardines, is going to be a hazard for all of us. So I urge the city planning office to please reject this development. Next caller, Steve Lucero, you may now speak. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Thank you. Um, is, I, I'm a part of the Lincoln Heights Neighborhood Council. I'm sorry if I sound a little worked up at the moment, but I cannot believe that it was mentioned that this is supposed to alleviate the housing crisis to any degree. These are luxury homes being built on sacred hills of the, of the area. Um, I'm appalled. This is economic violence and gentrification. It's very sad to be watching this. Thank you. Thank you. Next caller, Tracy Sanchez. Hi, good morning. My name is Tracy Sanchez and I'm the daughter of long-term residents from Lincoln Heights in El Sereno. Um, and I'm just calling in to say that I oppose the Onyx project due to the affordability concerns and wildlife concerns have been brought up. Um, I really don't think that luxury homes are going to serve a community that is largely working class. Um, thank you for your time. Next caller, David Mendoza. Hello, can you hear me? We can hear you. Hi, I live at 2821 Burrell Street. I'm a resident there. 
And I just wanted to address another another problem as well. So the low tenants, the tenants from the low income apartments on Huntington Drive, Park, on Radium, Moonstone, Onyx, Canso, and Burrow. So that means less parking, and sometimes no parking for the rest of us. The new low income apartments will be additional congestion when they are finally done. And finally, with this new proposal, parking in our own, you propose parking in our own neighborhood, and that will become obsolete. Also, anyone you put on these new housing will be in danger of the new sliding land and the fire hazard. Thank you. Thank you. Next caller, Adam Boz. Yes, hi there. Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, yeah, my name is Adam Boz. I live just above the proposed development on Amethyst. I've worked as a wildlife biologist for the past 15 years. And over the last year of living in this neighborhood, we've observed over 63 different species of native and federally protected animals using this exact plot of land and the adjacent habitat. So, you know, the idea that the developer has put forth that this is a diseased and derelict plot of land with no ecological value is just wildly uninformed. You know, the proof is in the pudding. These animals are here and no amount of manicured pocket parks and small, pretty green spaces, although they may be more aesthetically pleasing, will make up for the grave loss that wildlife will suffer if this proposed development is approved. So we really encourage... Uh, city council to reject this proposal for both the human and wildlife community here thank you john collinson hi can you hear me yes hi my name is john collinson i'm a land use activist for preserving natural habitats in northeast los angeles i object to the onyx 32 project on the basis of the destruction of the mature and protected walnut trees and wildlife habitat and the geological and fire threats to community safety the city of los angeles has approved destruction of protected trees and housing developments throughout east and northeast la for the short-term financial interest of developers who have no commitment to the health and welfare of low-income people of color communities or the sustainability of these communities in an ever worsening climate crisis Thank you. Shelly Billick. Thank you. Uh, this is Shelly Billick. I'm chair of the Los Angeles Community Forest Advisory Committee, and we support the staff's recommendation to deny the Onyx project. Uh, many of the speakers before me have very eloquently uh, stated all of the reasons. There's very little to no uh, benefit to the community uh, for that doesn't make up for the destruction of this wildlife habitat for the 31 uh, black walnut trees that are rare and near threatened. And there's absolutely no reason to go forward with this project. Um, I work in El Sereno and in Northeast LA, and I've seen many of these types of projects go up. The only people that they benefit are the developers in their pockets. I urge you to deny this project. Thank you. Thank you. Next caller, Gregory Trubnikov. We'll move on to the next speaker. Next caller, Sylvia Cruz. Okay, hi, can you hear me? Yeah. Thank you. Um, we urge the uh, planning department to um, exercise their duty to follow the law, to protect the constituents, and to deny the variance uh, application 
uh, and require that an environmental impact report be issued because the current MND has a myriad of deficiencies, which the developers have ignored for six months or longer, and uh, to correct and because it appears they do not care about the law, do not care about the community, and just care about a quick profit. Uh, moreover, um, uh, the developers should sell the land to a community group that is standing by trying to get grant money to to make that uh, parcel into a public park, sacred sacred land, Native American park, um, which would give them a, a the remedy of a fair market value since they acquired the parcel outside of fair market value. Finally, before the uh, CD14 development rep, uh, deputy come, uh, comes in and, and asks for Sorry. yet another continuance. Uh, Sylvia, would you please wrap up your thoughts? Your time is up. Yes, we want to remind CD14 that we donated also, uh, if the developers donated, because we donated our votes. We gave you your jobs to protect us, and we're asking you for protect us uh, if you want us to continue to, to vote for, for your administration. Thank you. Thank you. Next caller, last four digits, 9682. You may now speak. Please press star six to unmute yourself. Uh, this is Dr. Tom Williams. I have a PhD in geology and zoology, and I've done about 500 environmental impact reports and statements worldwide. I uh, highly recommend follow the Department of City Planning's position. Deny these variations. The real problem with the whole site is it's too steep, and they're going to have to excavate 20,000 loaded cubic yards of dirt. There's no haul route provided in the MND. There are no staging areas. One staging area was referenced as being at Tanto and Onyx, except that nobody could ever use it, and it's immediately adjacent to existing residences. The whole route, the staging area, the geological hazards with so many retaining walls, the whole place will be a retaining wall. And God help you if there's an earthquake. Please note that your turn uh, is up. Okay, uh, please deny. Thank you. This is Deborah Cahan, DAA. I'd just like to note that we are at time for public comment, but we will continue taking speakers as I see there are still more in the queue. Um, on that note, uh, if you are here for item two, which is 1304 Maltman, please note we are still on item one and we will likely not hear item two until closer to 11 and place it approximately 1045 or 11 o'clock. So we will continue with speakers. Thank you. Thank you, Deborah. Next caller, last four digits, 8890. Please unmute yourself. Hello, this is uh, Diana Nicole. I'm on the board with Los Angeles Audubon Society, and I, I uh, support staff's recommendation to deny this project. The city cannot approve this project because the MND is deficient. As noted by the trustee agency, the California Department of Fish and Wildlife in their letter that is in the record. Um, and I just want to add that, you know, the uh, applicant's representative brought up uh, some mitigation. Um, but the mitigate, they have not mitigated by replacing um, at the five to one, which is required by area effective for walnut woodlands. This is also addressed in the CDFW letter. So, you know, again, the. Please note that your time the, is up. The, yeah, uh, just um, again, so I, we support the um, denial of this project staff was correct in this case so i urge uh you all to support staff and deny this project next caller brenda Contreras. you may now speak hi um 
This is Brenda Contreras. Um, I just wanted to point out that the developer bought this property knowing what the zoning was and knowing that there were rare and protected Southern California black walnuts on this hill. The developers um, have allowed for the tree of heaven to overgrow in this area. They dismiss the importance of the black walnut by saying the black walnuts are diseased. But when you purchase a property with threatened species, you have a legal responsibility to tend to the land. Um, it's manipulative to neglect your responsibilities and argue that there's no value here. The developers don't care about the law. They don't care about the community or they don't care about the future of this community. This is a highly valuable area for biodiversity and wildlife. It affects the entire community. City of LA must reject this project. Thank you. Thank you. Next caller, last four digits, four, six, four, five. You may now speak. Good morning. My name is Jamie Hall. I'm a land use and environmental attorney with Channel Law Group. I'm here speaking in a pro bono, pro bono capacity on behalf of Urban Woodlands Watch. I want to uh, reiterate the fact that the California Department of Fish and Wildlife, a trustee agency, wrote a comprehensive letter to the city saying that the MND was deficient because a sensitive natural community exists on this site. These are not just individual trees. This is a California walnut woodland. And the California Department of Fish and Wildlife specifically said that mitigation takes the form of area. Replacing trees alone is inadequate mitigation. So you actually can't approve this project regardless because the environmental clearance document is deficient. I also just want to congratulate the community and all the wonderful comments. This is exactly the type of environmental work that we need to be doing if we have any hope of changing the trajectory that this planet is on. And we support these recommendations by staff. Please note that Thank your you. time is up. Thank you. Next caller, Esther Petcher. You may now speak. Hi. Um, I live here on Barrel Street, and um, I just want to say you're talking about preservation and and we have a photo about 20 from 20 years ago of two condors sitting on our telephone pole on rising drive and forest park and every day these there's three condors that are flying over amethyst hill down towards commodore they fly around there and they go across to ascot hills so they are an endangered bird. And I think any construction going on on Onyx Project 32 would disrupt their, um, their travels here. And I need, we need to think about that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Next caller, Perry Petcher. Yes, uh, I, our house is right up against uh, the project. So, so one of the homes will be like just 20 feet. The wall will be like 20 feet from my porch. And, and the street we live on, Barrel, it's only 22 feet wide. And to add 20 homes to the traffic where we have to turn our mirrors in so there's more room when we talk, we have 20 homes, please, uh, Thank you. Next caller, last four digits, eight six three one. This is Joanne D'Antonio. I serve on the Community Forest Advisory Committee. You are on your way to a denial of this project as design as designed before this was continued. Please go through with it. The MND is deficient, as noted by California Department of Fish and Wildlife in their letter. And by approving this project, city planning also ignores the city council's recent directive to city departments to follow the recommendation of the LA Sanitation Biodiversity Report. Taxpayers paid for this report that identifies Los Angeles as a biodiversity hotspot. 
That means we are experiencing loss of the very elements that make it healthy to live here. Do you want the city to become so hot and the air so polluted that lives are lost? It is already starting to happen. Yesterday, the first day of fall, the U.S. Weather Service sent a heat advisory to us to stay inside. We need to learn to live with existing trees, not cut them down. Please there enter. Your time is up. There's, please deny. There's reason to, to protect these black walnut trees. Thank you. Thank you. Next caller, Terry Austin. Yes, hello. Can you hear me? <clears throat> yeah. Yes, I uh, wanted to support the recommendation to deny this project um, and the very uh, poor rendering that the developer has put forth. It is a blight. Uh, the loss of 31 black walnut trees is, is just unconscionable when we are losing so many trees. The, the number one reason we're losing trees is to individual residential development. And so I support the um, department's denial of this project and I hope that you will uh, vote to go through with that. Thank you. Next caller, Silva Blackstone. Yes, Silva Blackstone, retired certified arborist. And I urge the commission or wh whatever personnel is involved to uh, deny this project as recommended by the staff. And um, the the characterization by the by the developers representative today that said that this is scattered uh, unhealthy trees uh, is not correct. And to put cram a lot of sensitive black walnuts into a green belt is not how black walnuts grow. It is not how they thrive. They thrive naturally, widely spa spaced apart. And to put them in a green belt and maybe perhaps add uh, supplemental water is not good for their roots. It's not good for their biology and would be a really big mistake. It's just one of the uh what would i say it's just one of the mis misunderstandings of the natural habitat and Please note that your time is up thank you thank you next caller last four digits five one six two hi my name is michael hayden um i live in lincoln heights this proposal would decimate a significant hill in our neighborhood and one of the few remaining stands of threatened black walnut trees. The idea that deforesting an untouched grove of these trees in our city will not, not have a significant environmental impact is cynical and completely false. This must not be allowed. We've seen so many other projects in our neighborhood be approved with completely um, fraudulent and, and incomplete uh, environmental review. Additionally, this plan would remove thousands of cubic feet of soil significantly more than what is allowed under city regulations. This wanton disregard for environment um, and its disregard for the community that calls this place home. This kind of development represents the worst, most cynical response to our housing crisis by creating homes that don't help our low-income communities and instead decimate those same communities' open spaces and irreplaceable protected trees and environment. Zoning regulations exist to prevent these kinds of abuses by profit-driven developers. And additionally, the developer's request for a waiver to build on a substandard hill acknowledges that, that this development is up. unsafe. The city must not allow this to go forward. Thank you. Thank you. Next caller, Jen Spazmaster, you may now speak. <laughs> Hi there, I'd just like to echo the sentiments of the people expressing um, to get the, the, the uh, I'm so sorry, I'm like already very nervous. I would just like to support everybody that's saying, uh, please don't let this development help in. I think it's important that that lady said that the trees were diseased and such comments expressed a disparity that actually does not exist in the neighborhood. And I would just hope that this committee stand with the neighborhood the resources are within the city and everything that you guys need to do to help yourselves are within the citizens speaking and supporting you in voting and in other and by showing up today. And I just I hope that you honor the people of the neighborhood and not give way to external money. 
X color Sylvester. Hi, yes. Um, I'm Silvestre, and um, I've been living and I was raised here in Lincoln Heights my whole life. And I'm here to express my opposition to the proposed development of the 32 small lot homes. I'm not okay with any type of development that will increase gentrification anywhere and displace flora and fauna altogether. It's racist, irresponsible, violent, and will increase policing in our communities. The displacement of unhoused residents and therefore increased stress drug overdose and illness the development is a huge health hazard to long time existing community including the black walnut trees and it is unacceptable and we, we need to protect each other okay next let's call her Ilya. Hi, this is Ada, actually. Um, I am um, one of the uh, people who are opposing this project. Um, I actually live in Happy Valley. I live I live right on the other side. And um, with um, the last time um, that there was any building around the hills, um, during our rainy season, there's many landslides. So by this project getting approved by the city, who is re responsible for these landslides? Is the city responsible for actually um, giving permits to these people to build? Or um, is this person who's only out to make a profit the person responsible for damaging the homes underneath? I'm done, thank you. Thank you, next caller, Peter. Peter, would you please unmute yourself? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, my name is Peter Santana. I think if the lot was put up for sale, that means it's uh, buildable. Um, and I think this project is gonna help the community uh, development, enhancing the community. Oh. Also by adding more streets, new trees to the community. I think a lot of those trees are probably very old which are dangerous also to the uh, to the area. Uh, and I think if the lot is not buildable, I think then the city should buy the lot back from the developer. Thank you. Thank you. Next caller, Delia Guerrero. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, my name is Delia Guerrero. I'm um, a 55 plus year resident of the area. This is, uh, I'm highly opposed to it. Uh, besides losing our natural habitat that is up there, the surrounding neighbors will be cut off from the existing project. Uh, the homes are highly unaffordable. That's not what our community is about. And again, it's outside money coming into our community trying to reshape it. Uh, there's no need for a development like this. Um, as stated, who's going to be in charge of the landslides? Who's going to be in charge of any of the other problems that come along with this? So I'm highly opposed to this. And once again, we're, we're, we're going around uh, the city guidelines. We're trying to bypass and change things that have been um, set for quite a while. So I highly suggest and recommend as a person from the community that you oppose this project. Thank you. Next caller, Elise Ackerman. Good morning. My name is Ilsa Ackerman. I've lived in this neighborhood adjacent to the proposed Onyx 32 site for 20 years. I wish to state emphatically that I'm against this development. I've been going door to door to canvas the neighborhood and raise awareness about the Onyx 32 project. And what I've learned is that not a single person living in the neighborhood surrounding the project is for it. These people, many of whom are long-term residents are tired of voting this down. They're tired of traffic, tired of terrible infrastructure, and tired of parking issues that already exist in the neighborhood. They're tired of repeatedly calling into Zoom meetings during working hours. This project dismisses the needs of the long-term residents of this neighborhood and destroys their investment. 
Onyx 32 is an improperly scaled, unaffordable housing project that will line the pockets of a greedy developer. Nothing more. Thank you. Thank you. Next caller, Mino. Oh. Hi there. This is Mino Palouse. Uh, my family and I have lived here for 20 years. Four lots into 32. It's kind of madness, right? Have you seen their cartoonish plans? In order for this project to be realized, they're asking permission to break every zoning regulation in the book. Why do we have those regulations in the first place then? Again, simple lies and madness. I'd like to speak to prosperity. Homeownership is the number one way for working class people to accrue wealth in America. After all the years of hard-won value, the homeowners of this neighborhood, the people who've stood the test of time and outlived crime and neglect because this neighborhood has the magic of these last open hillsides, well, it's a direct slap in our faces to have some developer come in with a get-rich-quick scheme that leaves all of us poorer. The community has expressed its unanimous displeasure. Please note that your that time is up. Please kill this crazy Onyx. 32 project now. Thank you. Next caller, Sarah Clendening. You may now speak. Good morning, <clears throat> Sarah Clendening, uh, president of Lincoln Heights Neighborhood Council, speaking as an individual. Uh, I don't know if the Planning Commission talks to LADBS, but the applicant, Henry, Henry Suarez, uh, purchased many, many lots at flat top. And he built uh, two or three homes that are currently eroding off the hill. They're uninhabited, they're vacant. Um, they were probably red tagged. Uh, he's a very irresponsible. He left a 10 foot tall pile of concrete rubble on our mountains top at flat top. And we had to call LADBS. And the guy came out and said, uh, Oh my God, I can't believe how neglectful and irresponsible this developer is. I also want to talk about how the EMV is flawed. It says that uh, the likelihood of any cultural architect or archeological resources is non-existent um, because, uh, because there was no water in the area. The river was a mile away. That is a lie. Uh, there was a stream right there, the Arroyo de los Posas. Um, also, uh, this came up positive on AB52 as a sacred Please site. Please note that your time is up. So, yeah, sacred land file, uh, positive results. So, I mean, it's your city's playing with fire here. All right, thanks. First name, Andrew. You may now speak. Andrew, would you please unmute yourself? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, I'm not sure. Okay, I need to turn one of these off. Okay, I will move on to uh, our next caller, Gregory Trubnikov. Please unmute yourself. Gregory, you are now unmuted. All right, I believe we're still experiencing some issues with this caller. Um, I don't see other any other hands raised at this time. Two more. Okay. Deborah KNDA, why don't we take these last two callers and um, and move forward? Sounds good. Uh, next caller, Alina Ching. Hello. Okay, hey, we can hear you. All right. Okay. Good morning, everyone. And thank you very much for all the participation. I am so encouraged and, uh, you know, delighted 
that our beautiful historic community of Rose Hills has this kind of impact into this project. I've known about this project seven years ago, Onyx 32, and most of the residents in the area, or almost 99%, uh, oppose this project simply because we would like to preserve the beauty of our community. As of now, it looks like that's the only hill that is open space right now. With the development of uh, the new uh, low-income uh, apartments across the street covers the hillside. So I would like to thank, I oppose this project. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Next caller, Lola Salgado. Hello? Hey, we can hear it. Okay, so I oppose this project. It's unsafe, inhumane. It's a fire hazard project. There are so many rare and protected um, black walnut California trees that prevent erosion. If if these um, many community members are able to be on these meetings because we have to work to pay increasing housing due to developments like this, um, there are so many reasons why this project shouldn't go forward. Um, it's native land that should be given back to the people that are perfect for protecting this land and city officials should prioritize community members and ask what they ask community members what they need because community members know what they, they need. Outsiders don't know what the community has been through and what's good for them. So community members are the people that they should talk to. Thank you. Thank you. Um, going back to Andrew. Yes, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, I'm sorry, I apologize for the confusion. Yesterday I submitted a uh, online petition of 515 supporters of housing in Eastside Los Angeles, in particular uh, Onyx and another project. It was submitted online through a video and um, where the applicants have to provide, not the applicants, the petitioners have to provide their name and their email address. And they also have to, in, in to support the project, they have to click a tab that says, yes, I support housing like the homes in the video. The, the uh, video on the website provides plans and details and drawings and allows petitioners to study the project as much as they want, as much time as they want. So I just need to confirm that it was uh, ex received and accepted and I am available uh, in the email with staff to uh, provide. Please note that your time is up. Thank you. For our last caller, Gregory. Yes, can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Oh, I'm so happy. Uh, I apologize for this. Uh, my name is Gregory Trubnikov. Uh, I want to use the opportunity to share my uh, contact information. If I allow to, please write my telephone number down. My number is 323-578-4561. I live on Commodore Street, 2606 Commodore Street, for 21 years, a little more. And I'm categorically against of this project because I believe this project will, by completion, uh, cause the decrease of living standards and the quality of life in our neighborhood. For all neighbors, for me including, uh, however, I'm open-minded and flexible. Please note that your time is up. Yes, in my understanding of the world, dynamics. But this is a money grab, you know, this is not luxury ap apartments. This, this is a, not housing. This is a shoebox. That's how it looks to me. What about luxury? What? Gregory, would you please note that your time is up for public public comment? Yes, let me, I have some, two questions to the committee. Question number one, 
What benefits you are, uh, do you see in in this uh, project for community and for me personally? And question number two: Is there any negative issues you you see? Thank in you. That? At this time, since there are no further hands raised for public comment, I will bring this back to our deputy advisory agency. Thank you, Sierra. This is Deborah Cahan, DAA. Um, I don't believe we have council representation on the call. Please raise your hand if indeed someone is here representing council district. Parece que no hay representación del consejo en esta llamada. Por favor, levante su mano si están aquí. Okay, the public comment period is now closed. Does the committee have any comments or questions? El periodo de comentario público ha concluido. ¿Tiene algún comentario o pregunta el comité? Bureau of Street Lighting has no comments. Bureau of Engineering have no comments. Department of Recreation and Parks has no comments. Deborah Kay and DAA, thank you. Um, I will now invite the hearing officer to ask any questions from the applicant. Para invitar al oficial de audiencias a que le haga preguntas al solicitante. Nicole Sanchez with City Planning. I've heard the public testimony and I, I don't have any questions for the applicant at this time. Uh, the public testimony will be reflected in the staff report that will go to the East Los Angeles Area Planning Commission. Uh, the record will therefore remain open for public comment until then. Once again, the hearing before the APC is scheduled for October 27th after 4.30 p.m. Hola, habla Nicole Sánchez. Escuché el testimonio público y no tengo ninguna pregunta para el solicitante en este momento. El testimonio público se reflejará en el informe del personal que eventualmente irá a la Comisión de Planeación del Área del Este de Los Ángeles. Por lo tanto, el registro...